Hello everyone, I am so happy to see you. According to YouTube Analytics, over 70% of you guys are not subscribed to the channel. If you guys want Pugsley to eat this month, I suggest you do so. Enjoy the video guys, and I love you guys forever and always. Alright everyone, so today we are doing a updated rune tier list. Basically, I haven't done one of these in a while. Plus, I think it's fitting to do this since Nar's main rune did just get nerfed. Also, another non-gameplay video because my finger is still, you know, not the best. So, yeah, we're gonna do a tier list today. So, PTA. Also, uh, I had to make, the, before I start, I had to make this, uh, from, not from scrap, but I just edited one because there's, like, a lot of, like, it's kind of outdated. So, I had to remove a lot and then I had to add some. So, yeah. But yeah, let's get straight into it. PTA. I think PTA mm -hmm. is pretty viable, honestly. I think the changes that they made with PTA a little back, a little while back made it where you can proc it more often. Definitely think it's a lot better. The problem is, like, why it isn't meta, obviously, is that is because it doesn't give the sustain that you would really like. I feel like that's, like, the main reason why we would go fleet footwork nowadays. Sustain movement speed, like, two perfect things for NAR. But yeah, PTA, good burst damage. I really like it early game. It feels best early in my experience. And then even mid game, it feels pretty good if you're ahead. So yeah, I'll say it's pretty viable. Do a snowball build with it. Oh yeah, Lethal Tempo's not here. Duh, sorry guys. I forgot that Lethal Tempo got removed. I'm not gonna lie. Okay, Fleet Footwork. Obviously, I still think this is meta even after all the nerfs. The healing nerfs, another healing nerf. Movement speed in there. I still think it's the rune. Um, it just sucks that the ADC meta has kind of ruined us, but it's still everything that we need. Like, healing movement speed is what we need in lane. Healing to sustain everything top lane with their low HP stat, and then movement speed to escape and kite everything. I think it's still the perfect rune on Nar. Conqueror. Now, a lot of people do like to go Conqueror on Nar. For me, though, it's not the best. It kind of just feels i'll say it's okay i feel like mini nar you're kind of useless but mega i think it's a good mega nar run. in lane i think it's the worst because like only way you're proccing this is in mega nar combo and i feel like it's really difficult to do that plus you have to hit everything if you miss anything i think it's cooked it's like i've always said this it's a rune for like that one trick should take but i'm a one trick and still not like to take it so but if you're a one trick that's what I've always said. But yeah, it's just not for me. Like, the stacks is too hard in mini NAR. Triumph. I would say this is meta. Um, now, before, I did prefer Absorb Life. But obviously, with Absorb Life nerfs, I think once I start playing again, I'm going to go Triumph. I think Absorb Life is not the best anymore. Plus, this is good for team fights in lane. Obviously, it's not good unless, like, you want me to with top laner, jungle, or mid laner, or whatever. But yeah, team fights. This is elite. And I mean, this was the rune that we took before Absorb Life, which is next. Absorb Life. Um, you can maybe argue it's still meta. I'm just gonna say it's viable. Um, I think the healing's pretty useless early, but once you get the mid to late, you start to get it back. But at that point, I think I would rather have the Triumph. So I'm just gonna say it's viable. I still don't think it's the worst because it is a healing rune, and we do love healing in lane. But like the value just isn't there as much as the fleet footwork is nowadays. Okay, presence I never take because mana. I believe this is alacrity. I'm pretty sure this is meta. Yep. Um, yeah. Basically, this is a rune that if you don't take, it feels it feel actually just feels so bad once you get the mid game because the extra attack speed is actually just, just like feels like you just need it. It's like going the attack speed key shard or going the AD shard over attack speed. Like it feels awful. If you guys ever did that, you would know. You know how awful it feels, and that's just the same feeling with Alacrity, honestly. I feel like you need a certain amount of attack speed on Gnar for Gnar to be, like, feel good. I believe this is Legend Haste. I'm gonna say it's viable. It's gonna be un- it's gonna be not meta because of Alacrity, of course. Alacrity is the best, but I could see Haste being good. Plus, we, we already get enough Haste from Trinity Force Black Cleaver anyways that we don't really need this, but I'm gonna say it's viable. Like, it's not bad, I think. It's just that Alacrity is just better. Okay, Bloodline. I'm gonna be honest. I'm just gonna say it's okay. I've never been the biggest fan of Bloodline. Or I'm gonna say it's viable. I feel like this is kind of like Absorb, Absorb Life now. 
like a bloodline pretty bad early but once you get to later stages i think it's okay so like it, i'll say it's the bottom of viable it's between viable and okay for me because like nar does like lifesteal but the problem is we don't get this in lane so but in later stages it's okay coup de gras so you deal more damage to champs with less than 40 percent hp again most precision runes are viable i think it's viable I'll say overall this isn't the best, and I'll say why later. I just think it's basically just a thing with Gnar. Like the same with Cutdown, like, I mean it did get nerfed, but I would still say it's viable. This is one where you do more damage, so like this would be better early, this would be better if you're poking them more out in lane, trying to kill them. But here's why Last Stand is meta. You basically, Last Stand's basically like a combination of these two. You get less value, like around the 60% mark while you're below 60%, which I feel like it's a very big case because in lane you're always, you have such a low HP stat, you're pretty much always gonna be under 60% HP at one point. And then you get the full value once you're under 30%, like it's five to 11%, I believe. So I feel like you're always gonna be able to proc this as of these two, it's like you're not always gonna be able to proc it. I feel like this, you're gonna going to be able to proc it at most times since you have that such low HP stat in lane. I think that's why last stand is so good. Okay, next, Electrocute. I'm gonna say it is, I don't wanna say it's like, I'm gonna say it's bad. It, let's be honest, it kind of is. Like if we're talking like solo queue, meta, like for fun, I like it, but let's, I'm gonna be honest, it's pretty bad. Like whenever you do proc it, like the damage isn't there, like PTA is just more reliable. Like even with like a Meganar, the only time I can see it really good is like maybe with the Lethality build, but even then I still think there's better runes. Or even AP build, I think there's better runes. I don't think it's good. Dark Harvest, I'm honestly gonna say worst. It's so hard to proc this. Sure, I know Nar can get their opponents to low HP, but even then I only think Dark Harvest is a good rune, especially with the build that is meta nowadays. Like I definitely think uh, Electrocute's more viable for then Dark Harvest, I feel like it's more reliable. Any stacking rune is kind of difficult. I feel like to pull off on Nar, especially of this kind. Hell of Blades, I'm definitely gonna say this is viable. Sure, I got some nerfs, but I still think it is one of the more sleeper OP runes on Nar. I personally do not take it just because I'm like so used to fleet footwork, but I definitely think Hell of Blades definitely possible. Like the burst damage can be very, very surprising. Same with PTA, except that so damage it's attack speed cheap shot i'm just gonna say this is okay the damage is nice but i think i would prefer another rune which is please this is taste of blood i think i would i would say taste of blood's very viable again it's healing uh the problem is we just don't go uh domination secondary that much anymore because we go fleet footwork primary and then we go resolve secondary so like we don't really go uh, domination secondary, but I def definitely think it's viable. I think the healing is there. It's kind of like an absorb life now. It got plenty of nerfs, but you know the healing's nice for lane whenever you can hit an ability. Sudden impact, honestly, bro, I don't really like it. Sure, I maybe our E counts, but even then, bro, our E's on such a long cooldown that I don't even think it's worth the go, especially over the other two options. Okay, these next three, like, these next three runes always confuse me, so I'm gonna say never take on Nar. Like, I'm just gonna be dead honest, bro. These three runes, I never know when to take, so I never go them. Plus, I never go Domination Primary anyways, unless I'm going Halo Blades. And usually whenever I do do that, I usually do just go Ghost Poro, just because that's what I'm used to. But, yeah, I'm just gonna say never take, because I don't wanna, I don't even wanna go into those runes. Okay, Treasure Hunter. I think Treasure Hunter is very viable. I think uh, Taste of Blood and Treasure Hunter are the best domination keystones for Nar. Treasure Hunter before nerfs, I would say maybe meta, but did get a ton of nerfs, so you don't get as much gold. But I mean, the gold's still there for Snowball. So like this, like these four runes up here with Precision, and then Taste of Blood Treasure Hunter would be my preferred like rune set if I do not want to go Resolve Secondary. Relentless Hunter, I'm actually going to say this is okay. I think the rune isn't horrible. The movement speed, it feels like if you have the stats, you have a Cloud Soul. So I actually don't think it's too horrible. The problem is you would have to give up like a Treasure Hunter to go it. And I would prefer getting the gold than this because like you do have to stack this up. And then no matter what, you're just going to get 
some gold with this to show you and get some movement speed, but at the end of the day, I think I'd rather have the extra gold for, to finish my item. Ultimate Hunter, I mean, I'm just gonna say it's bad. Like the idea is cool, but like our old ult ultimate cooldowns already so low are so low that we don't even need it. So I'm just gonna say it's like I'm honestly gonna say it's worse because like the we should like never take it, but maybe in some cases if you're gonna ult twice, but at that point you don't really need it, so I'm just gonna say worst. Alright, we're going into summon airy now. Summon airy, I'm gonna say is it's pretty bad, like, let's be honest. I'm not gonna say it's worse, because I think you can get some value on it. But, it's pretty bad. I really like the rune, I think it's fun, but whenever you look at damage charts and you look at the value, you usually never have over 2,000. So that's why it is bad. You usually have like 1,000 to maybe 1,500 if you're lucky value with it, so... Yeah, and then Arcane Comet is just better. I think you get better value. I'm just gonna say it's okay. Especially, I tried this recently with Lethality Nar. If you get ahead with like a Profane Hydra or any Lethality item, and you're going a Squishy Champ, you can do like a third of their HP with one Q. But other than that, I think it's pretty bad, but I'm just gonna put it in okay. I definitely think Conqueror is more viable than it. Here, I'll put... I don't think this should be with Conqueror, so I'm just gonna put... Arcane at the top of bad, and then I'll put some airy at the bottom of bad. However, I do think Arcane is on a different level than Summon Airy. Phase Rush, I definitely think it is viable. I think Phase Rush is one of the most slept runes on, especially on Nar. Because I feel like you can take Phase Rush in certain matchups and completely counter them if you know what you're doing. At movement speed, it's a very, very underrated chart. It's pretty bad early, but once you get the mid late, definitely think it is very viable. Again, the problem with going phase rush is that you do not get much sustain because once you go phase rush, like the rune tree doesn't offer much sustain. So you're pretty much forced to go sustain in your secondary, which means you're pretty much not taking precision at all, which is pretty tough. I think that's what makes it tough because if you go this, you might want to go like a second wind or uh, taste the blood, but. I think that's one of the main reasons why it can't be meta, just because of its rune tree under it. But yeah, matchups like Nasus, I think that's pretty easy with. Trundle, even Darius, I think, very slept on. Nullifying, or I'm just gonna say it's okay. I definitely prefer other things, but you know, I do notice the shield and lane a ton whenever I go this. So, I'll say it's okay. Mana Flow, never take it. Nimbus Cloak, I'm honestly gonna say it's okay. I'm gonna say it's above Nullifying or I would prefer to take this over Nullifying or because whenever I do take this Face Rush, I usually go Ghost. Whenever I press Ghost or Flash, bro, this thing makes you go zoom zoom and it just feels pretty good. Especially when TPing, like whenever you're TPing and you get that another burst of movement speed, it feels pretty pretty good. Transcendence, again, I just think it's okay. It's kind of in the same boat as haste. Honestly, I want to put haste down here too. Like haste isn't bad. Like it is viable, but like at the same time, bro. Like we already have enough ability haste. So I'm just gonna put. It, I'm gonna I change my opinion a little bit. I'm gonna say it's okay. But anything with ability haste, I feel like we already have enough with our build with 24 spot cleaver. So I'm just gonna put them at okay. If we didn't have as much ability haste in our build, maybe more viable but i'm just gonna say it's okay celerity i think celerity is definitely definitely viable i think uh i really like this one and honestly i'm gonna put nimbus up here too i really like nimbus too celerity though the move speeds just like overall just increasing it i think is really really good like seven percent more effective like this also helps like it just helps everything absolute focus i'm just gonna say it is okay problem is that it's hard to stay above 70% HP a lot of the time. But if you can do that, I think it's okay. Scorch, I don't really like that much, to be honest. Honestly, thinking about it, Cheap Shot, I don't really like either. I'm gonna put these both in bad. I don't really like those runes. It's kind of like the same build. I don't really like them that much. However, I do think Cheap Shot's just a little bit better. Water Walking, I'm gonna say, I mean, I would not want to take it. Water walking just like isn't the best for me. Only time it's useful is whenever like team fight basically. Or if we're doing a roam. It's like I don't think it's the best on that. And then Gathering Storm definitely think it's the most viable with Nimbus and Celerity. I think it's just good to have scaling damage. If you can have scaling damage in your rune set, 
then I just think it's really, really good. All right, grasp. I don't think grasp is meta, sadly, because ranged, it just isn't as good as melee. And we mainly proc it in range, so I'm just gonna say it's viable. I wish I could put it as meta, but it just sadly isn't as good as before. Definitely viable though, especially with Tank Gnar, but with the normal traditional build Trinity Force Cleaver, Fleet Footwork is just the best. If we're going Trinity Force and Cleaver, Fleet Footwork will probably always be the rune. That's all I'm saying, guys. But yeah, it's just viable, in my opinion. Aftershock, I'm gonna say it is okay, or it's honestly pretty bad, let's be honest. You only really practice in Mega Gnar, and then. Yeah, I would just rather go Grasp, let's be honest. Guardian, gonna say worst, like no situation we should ever be using Guardian. Demolish. I am gonna put Demolish at the top of Viable. It's almost meta, but you have to think, if we're going Resolve secondary, most of the time we're probably not going to take Demolish. I still think it is very, very viable in some matchups. Especially when we want to push for plates. And then it's just good for taking towers. I think split push build with Holdbreaker is pretty, pretty good. But if we're talking about meta build, I don't think this is the best rune. But it's definitely viable. Bawn of Life, I think it's one of the worst, in my opinion. Plus it's reduced on range, so what's even the point? Shield Bath, same difference. What's the point whenever you have Demolish, honestly? And then how do you even get shields on our actually never take? What am I talking about? Conditioning. I'm going to say I like conditioning whenever I'm going tank Gnar, but that's the only time I like it. So I'm just going to say it's okay. I'll put it at the top of okay with Conqueror. It's one of those runes you don't really get value on, plus you don't get value on it at all until after 12 minutes. So it's a scaling rune. If you got like some value from it early, maybe, but the fact that bone plating and second winner in the game, it just makes it okay. If, it, if, the, if these two runes were in the game, I could see it being up more viable, but... With the nerfs that they did, I think a couple seasons ago, made it, I think it's because of durability patch, honestly. It didn't make it as good. Okay, second wins. I am going to say this is meta. So we know a pattern here, right? Healing or sustain is broken on NAR. And then second win gives, it's one of the wins that give the most value. Definitely think it's better than Absorb Life now, after the recent changes. I think I preferred Absorb Life over second wins last patch but now this current patch i think i would prefer second win i know it's on the same rune tree but i'm just saying overall i think i would prefer this rune and then yeah it's just any healing and lane is good bone plating i'm also gonna say is meta i'm gonna say it's above second wind i know you can't take these two together but these two like you take these based on situation and i i would say they're just as good as each other so i'm gonna say it's meta and then bone plating is good all ins you take less damage. Very, very essential rune and against matchups where you just get one shot. I personally hate sometimes that I have to take bone plating, but it's just so good that you have to take it. Like I definitely prefer a second win, but bone plating just saves you in so many ways. So you have to take it in some matches, in some matchups. Overgrowth, I definitely think this is meta. So this is different from conditioning because you do get some value early and then you definitely get it once you get the amount of minions killed near you. And then the HP just scales over time in game. I think that extra HP, people don't realize it. It's like an extra 400 to 800 worth of gold value that you are getting with HP. And I believe that's more valuable than the conditioning value that you get because HP is more important on R than resistances, in my opinion. Because our HP stat's so low, this just helps it go up another 150 to 300 in the mid late game. Revitalize, I'm just gonna say, I mean, we don't really heal or anything. The only time you go this, if you're going like lifesteal build, I'm just gonna say it is bad. I'm not gonna say it's worse because you could take it once like you have like a enchanter or something, but I would definitely rather, rather just still go overgrowth. I'm just gonna say it's bad. Honestly, bro, Unflinching has not been the same after they changed it. it. Used to give tenacity, now it just gives armor magic resist. I'm just gonna say it's okay, but I definitely would not take it over overgrowth. Like I said, I think HP is more important. I generally think Glacial is one of the worst. Maybe a little bit better than Guardian, but you can only proc it in Mega Gnar and Mini Gnar is just cooked. You can't really do anything with it. Unsealed Spellbook, technically more useful than some of these runes. 
I'm honestly just gonna say, I was gonna say it's at the top of worst, like no reason to ever go this, I think. Sure, it's cool to swap out your spells, but let's be honest, bro. We just need flash TP and we're good. Maybe you try out for a ghost or a knight or something, but flash TP mainly what we need most of the time. First strike, I definitely think is the best, but I still think it's bad out of the inspiration rune tree. I think it's bad because early game, you have such low range that it's hard to proc. So you have to rely on hitting your Q. And by that, by default, I think it's just bad. So I'm just gonna put it in bad. Plus the goal value isn't even really that good. I've tested it out, it's not really that good. Especially on a champ like Gnar. Hextech Flash. I'm just gonna say never take because like with Gnar, whenever you like, and especially in Mega, like your flash has to be like so quick to get your ult off that I think this would never work unless you're cheesing in the bush, I guess. But like your Mega Nars on a time limit, so it would have to like be perfect time. I'm just gonna say never take. I genuinely think magical footwear is the worst. Sure, you get value on it technically after a point certain point, but you should be building boots first on Nar. So I think this is one of the worst things to go, especially early game, unless you're just rushing your item first. But at the end of the day, I think you're handicapping yourself by going this. Cashback, I definitely think this is okay. I definitely think it's a lot more doable than some of these other inspiration run trees. Cashback, I think, is pretty underrated. I think, are obviously, a reason we don't go it because we don't go inspiration first or secondary. But cashback can be pretty good, especially since our main three items that we do like to go are really expensive. Trinity Force, Black Cleaver, and Sterax are all over 3k gold, so you will be getting, what, around 500, 600 gold back on those three items. So, I mean, like, it's not horrible. You will get value off of it. So, in a sense, it probably is one of the more valuable runes if you think about it but we just do not go it triple tonic i think triple tonic is okay as well i think the elixir for damage on minions isn't too important but the elixir with damage and then the elixir that gives you a level up pretty pretty good the damage of course because you have a chance more chance to kill but the important elixir at level 9 that lets you upgrade another skill, it helps you get to your W faster. And it just helps you overall level up your things faster. And then Nar, one of his strongest points is whenever Q and W are upgraded all the way up. So this just helps you reach it quicker. So I'm going to say it's okay. Maybe if Inspiration Tree ever becomes meta on Nar, which I don't really see a world right now. But let's just say it does. This could be pretty viable. Who knows? Time work, I'll just say never take because only potions we're buying are early game and then i just think there's better options than this so i'm just gonna say never take same with the biscuits like man i don't really need it i mean we can technically take this potion one i'm just gonna say worse but i think you're just kind of cheating yourself out if you go this to to be honest because like you can just sit back you like you don't need like the potion effects immediately with this you can just sit back and wait I don't think it's really worth the take on Nar. Cosmic Insight. Now, maybe if we still go Stride Breaker, but like I can't. Like maybe. Does this work on Sterax Gauge? Maybe. Maybe Guardian Angel this works on, but at that point, it's so late into the game. I don't know. And then sure, the Summer Spell Haste 2. I just don't think it's the best. I'm not. It's not the worst. I'm gonna say it's bad. It's like not the worst, but also just isn't that good. So I'm just gonna say it's bad. There's definitely other runes in Inspiration Trio I'd rather go. Approach Velocity, I definitely think this is like one of the better Inspiration Rune Trees. Because just having more movement speed overall, I think is a good thing on Nar. Especially whenever you slow someone. Allow you to get more autos and stuff off, so I think this is good. And then Jack of All Trades, see, I try to do this in my head to see like how many stats we can get. But at the end of the day, we're pretty simple champ. And... Maybe we can get to the 10 stats if we do certain builds, but at the honestly, bro, just never take. I think it's too complicated at the point, plus the approach is just so much better. And uh, yeah, that is my runes tier list. I don't think I'm going to change anything. I'm just going to leave it as is. So it, I, I'm pretty sure it's pretty similar to my uh, older tier list, but you know, of course, meta is what we usually take all the time. It probably looks pretty familiar, doesn't it? A, pretty viable. I'm pretty sure 
this is pretty much exactly the same as my last rune tier list, like Faze, uh, HLB, PTA, Grasp, all in viable. I don't think uh, Lethal is here, but I don't even think these are all viable. Yeah, and by it being in viable, I definitely think it's possible to go, it just isn't the best. I definitely still think it's good on R, it just is not the best. And then yeah, okay, Conquer. Never really like Conquer that much, but yeah, this, this is my tier list. I'm just gonna stick with it. Yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments, what you think are the best runes are, if you disagree with me, if you agree with me. And uh, yeah, this is my runes tier list, season 14. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I love you guys forever and always. Bye bye!